Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial about using the logging and parameter API for the CrazyFly. We're using the virtual machine that's available on our webpage for doing this tutorial. And also we're continuing from a previous tutorial where we added some variables. So let's just quickly look at that. First of all, to use the crazy radio in the virtual machine, you need to pass the device into virtual machine. Like so, we start up the client and we also have a video feed showing the crazy fly. So let's start a crazy fly. So the variables we added last time was one for the temperature centigrade um, and Fahrenheit and we also added a parameter for motor control enable and so we can enable and disable the motors so what we're going to look at today is how we can control these from a UI so let's disconnect it and open up a project in PyCharm we go to the library and inside CF, inside CF client, UI tabs, there's all the tabs that are available in the client. And we'll use the example tab for this. So any tab and design you put in here will be automatically picked up when you start the application and they'll be available in the menus to show and hide. So it uh, consists of a Python file with implementation and a UI file that describes the design. So let's, before we start with the code, let's add the UI components. UI tabs. So here we have the example tab. Let's open that up. And we queue the UI designer. And let's add two labels that we want to use for showing the temperature. So let's name the first label underscore temp C and the second one underscore temp F and save that. We switch back to the code and this example file, the tab, contains what's needed to get started. So first of all, all the imports are here for the logging and parameters. We've also set up the signals that you connect to the CrazyFly API. Since you should not directly modify the user interface from the calls from the API, they're wrapped through PyQt signals. So these are the signals for connected, disconnected, log data, and new parameters. The tab also contains the name of the tab in the menu and also the display name on the tab. And what's already added as well is connecting the signals to the proper functions and also connecting the callbacks for connected and disconnected to the signals to the emit function. So for the logging, since the logging is checked towards the talk that is downloaded when you connect to a crazy fly. You have to wait until you reach a connected state to actually start the logging. So here we want to start the logging for the two variables temp C and F. So let's look at that. We add a new logging configuration, log config, and we call it temperature. We set it to update every 200 milliseconds, and this will set up the crazy fly in a way so the firmware will push an updated variable, the updated set of variables every 200 milliseconds. So then we'll add a variable, temp c, and there's no need to set the type since we want the type that's already set up in the crazy fly. It's set up as float. And we also add temp f. Before we can use the login configuration, we need to add it to the API. So 
we access okay and we add the config now when we add the config it's also sanity checked to see that the variables that are in the config are actually in the talk as well so this login configuration is usable so let's check so it's actually usable first so if it's valid we go ahead and add the callback data received callback is a callback that will be called when new data is received for this logging block we'll add a callback and we'll connect it to the signal that we have to wrap it since this will change the text labels in the ui so log data signal dot emit and the last thing we need to do is to start the configuration so when the crazy fly is connected this configuration will be set up and it will be started so when the logging config uh, log logging data for this configuration is sent back it will end up in logging data received here through the signal log data signal and for this function the, you get a timestamp you get the data itself as a dictionary and you get the logging configuration it belongs to so all we want to do here is to set the two text labels what we just added so we're called temp c set the text for this and we access the data for centigrade temp.c and we do the same for f like that so for every new update that comes in with this logging data the ui will be updated so let's go ahead and try what that looks like. So we go to bin, see if client, and select run. Connect. And we switch to the example tab. And here we can see the two labels now being updated, centigrade and Fahrenheit. You can also see that the tab is available here. So example tab can be closed, opened up. Now you can also see the logging configuration started. If you go to tab, log blocks, you'll see here there's one called temperature at a period of 200 milliseconds and it started. And you can also, if you want, log this to file by clicking this. Okay, let's have a look at the parameters as well. So for looking at the parameters, we go back to the UI designer and for enabling and disabling the motors, we want a checkbox. So we add a checkbox here to the UI and we call it enable motors and motors. And to be able to work together with firmware that does not have this parameter, what we'll do is we'll disable this by default and only enable this checkbox if the parameter exists in the firmware. So we save that and we switch back to the code. So then let's add First of all, when we click the checkbox, we want to set this parameter in the crazy fly. So let's click dot. Wait. So let's connect the click signal to a lambda function that. has the parameter enable if it's clicked and uh, checked and if it if we click it then we 
user API to set the um, correct parameter. So it's in the pom file, set value. And the variable we want to set is MC enable. And we want to set that to a string, depending on if it's clicked and checked or not. So this code will take care of setting the parameter in the crazy fly. And now what we want to do as well is to connect, when we connect the crazy fly, we want to connect any changes in this mc.enable parameter to come back to this file and to the UI so we can enable the checkbox. So we add a callback in the API, update callback, and we set the group to MC. We set the name to enable and a callback to the signal that we have. Param update the signal and the emit function for that. And the reason for this, um, for this, uh, these parameters for this function is that you can leave out the name, for instance, and then you'll get the callback for every parameter that's updated in the MC group. So when the parameter is updated, the signal will be emitted and it's connected to the param updated function. So let's go to that. Now, first of all, we want to make sure that if we haven't already enabled the checkbox, we want to enable it since the parameter exists once we read it now. So let's enable the if we haven't enabled the checkbox, let's enable it. So if it's not enabled, enable it. Then we want to also update the checked value of a box depending on what the parameter is in the crazy fly. So let's do that. And the value when it's passed to the param updated will be a string. So we evaluate the value and then we check the box accordingly. What we also need to do is to make sure that just in case we connect to a new crazy fly that doesn't have this parameter, we want to set the, we want to disable the checkbox so it will be re-enabled again if this parameter exists for the new crazy fly that we connect to. So this disconnected callback will be called when we disconnect and it will set, um, set the checkbox disabled. So let's see what this looks like when we run it. Let's fix that error. Now we connect to the crazy fly. And then we can see in the example tab that we now have enable motors. So let's see what it looks like before we connect. So now it's disabled. We connect and it becomes enabled. And since it's one now, since it's true, the motors are enabled, it's checked and the motors work. We just have to pass the PlayStation controller into the virtual machine. And now the motors are running. So we keep them running, and if we deselect enable motors, they stop. 
and I'm still I still have uh, frost enabled. You can see that here, and we switch back again, and we re-click enable motors, and the motors goes on again. Okay, so this was a simple example of how to add logging and parameters to your application and integrate it. Thanks for watching.